While the weather is often poor this time of year, the reduced humidity and the diminished atmospheric turbulence presents favorable conditions for capturing celestial bodies such as the Moon and Jupiter with the Canon RF 200-800mm f6.3-9 image-stabilized USM lens. But how good is the lens at truly delivering optimal results? Well, stick around after this short message for all the results. But first, subscribe to this channel for a chance to win a Canon EOS R5. I'll be giving one away to one lucky subscriber once this channel reaches 100,000 subscribers. Anyone above the age of 18 with a valid mailing address is eligible. Additional terms and conditions are linked in the description down below. This image of the Moon was shot one hour after sunset at 45 degrees north. The temperature, it's minus 3 and the humidity is very low. The aperture is f6.3, shutter 1 250th of a second, and it was shot raw. For best results, I have adjusted the midtones, shadows, and highlights, but I haven't added or adjusted the sharpness, and most importantly, I pulled the focus manually. And for those of you that are looking at getting started with astrophotography, let me just offer you a bit of a tip before I get back to the review. Now, the first thing you want to learn to do is shoot with manual focus, but what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to pull your focus before it gets dark. So how do you do that? Well, the one thing you want to determine is the hyperbolic distance. I know it sounds complicated, but I use Photofill's calculator. This isn't a paid spot. You can go to their website and it doesn't cost you anything. And all you have to do then is simply choose your camera, pick the aperture and the focal length. In this case, it tells me to focus at 2.3 kilometers out. And by doing so, anything from half that distance to infinity will appear sharp. Oh, and one last tip. Unless you're shooting with a 14 to 22 millimeter, you're going to want to pull your focus before dark. But make sure you turn off retract lens when powered off, or the focus will be reset when the camera's powered off. But now let's get back to the Moon. I'm very happy with the results of the Canon RF 200-800mm. The sharpness is good, and this was shot without the use of the 1.4 or the 2x extender. But for video, I'm using the Canon R5's 4K HQ mode, which provides 8K oversample 4K at 30 frames per second, 8-bit, I haven't modified the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. I haven't changed the saturation levels. I haven't turned on digital stabilization. And I'm not even using stabilization in post. The R5 and the 200-800mm are secured to the Manfrotto 504X video head with aluminum tripod and the tripod's fully extended. The camera's 15 feet from the road with cars driving by, and the stabilization from the lens and the camera deliver professional results. Now take a look at the footage from the Canon RF 800 f11. This was shot a couple of years ago with the same camera and the same settings, but as you can see, the footage is anything but stable. However, that shortly fixed as soon as I turn on stabilization in post. I know what you're thinking. How sharp would the footage be if I was shooting with this, the Canon RF 2x extender? That would give us 1600 millimeters with an f18. Well, that's exactly what you're looking at. This footage is shot with a Canon RF 2x extender, and the results are very good. Now, with the extender removed, the moon is certainly sharper, but it's a little hard to notice unless you're watching it on a much larger monitor or screen because the moon's much smaller in the frame. In getting this footage, I spent about two hours outside enjoying the cool, crisp air, locating the moon, trying different shots, trying different settings, but I also tried to capture Jupiter. Again, the cold, crisp air helped reduce atmospheric turbulence, giving me the sharpest image possible. This image is shot with a 2 times extender, giving us 1600 millimeters at f18. And I know what you're thinking. This is not how you shoot the planets, galaxies, or other celestial bodies. And you're right. For best results, other than shooting manual focus and determining the hyperbolic distance, you want to shoot with an, or, well, a motorized equatorial mount, and that's going to allow you to basically keep the camera steady and take into account the rotation of the planet. If you recall that video footage that I have of the moon, it looked like the moon was moving across the, um, the horizon. Well, it wasn't. That's actually due to the rotation of the Earth. And if you're going to shoot galaxies, 
other dim objects in the sky at night, what you need to do is have some sort of motorized equatorial mount. And what it's going to do is basically rotate the camera to take into account the rotation of the Earth. Because if you're going to hold your exposure for 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 50 seconds, whatever the amount is, you're going to get blurry results unless you're using some sort of motorized equatorial mount. And you're right, I should be using that for shooting Jupiter. But even if I had a motorized equatorial mount, I live in the GTA, it, there's an awful lot of light pollution. And while it's good for capturing, well, the moon and Jupiter to some degree, there's way too much, well, low light, or there's way too much light pollution for me to get, be able to get good results. And that's why to date, I haven't purchased a motorized equatorial mount, but it's always on my list of things to get. And who knows, maybe I'll pick one up in 2024. But this video, the whole purpose of this video is giving you another viewpoint of shooting with a brand new Canon RF 200 to 800 millimeter f6.3 to 9 image stabilized USM. I think it's a terrific lens. It's definitely a huge upgrade when compared to the 800 millimeter f11, a lens that I said back in 2020 was the most fun I'd ever had with one lens. And already just a couple of, sh I'd say I've shot three days with the 200 to 800 millimeter. And what I can tell you already is it just makes shooting effortless. Yes, you're limited to f6.3 to 9 without an extender. And with an extender such as, well, this one here, well, that changes from f6.3, doubles that to 12.6 to f18. But the results are terrific. The sharpness of this lens is very good for capturing the moon from stills as well as video and from well, capturing birds from other objects that I tried shooting with last week. The stabilization is terrific to have stabilization on this lens. Again, that Manfrotto tripod is about six feet high. So six feet up or a little bit higher than six feet is where I had the camera and the lens. And what that allows me to do is look directly down the barrel without being hunched over. But when you have, an, when you have a tripod fully extended like that, it picks up vibrations a whole lot more. Even a light breeze of around 10 kilometers an hour or six miles an hour, and with cars going by with an unstabilized lens, it creates a lot of vibrations. And even when I was shooting with the 800 millimeter F11, I had to be careful walking because if I walked at my normal pace, it would pick up the vibrations from there. But this lens, the 200 to 800 millimeter, with its image stabilization coupled with the image stabilization in the Canon EOS R5, is terrific. And that's without any digital image stabilization. It's just the hardware in body image stabilization of the camera and the lens. And I think it's terrific. I'm really excited by this lens. This is a huge upgrade over the 800 millimeter F11. But the true test of this lens, at least for me, is going to be in the spring when all the wildlife comes back to the country, when things start greening up again. And instead of having brown, gray, brown, we're going to have blue, green, and of course, the colors of the different wildlife. But in the meantime, I'm afraid I'm going to have to recommend you check out other channels of people who are in maybe Australia or Africa or other parts of the world where it's summertime now and not winter where many animals are hibernating. And that's one of the frustrating, one of the frustrating things about getting this lens now. Just like the 800 millimeter F11, I got that lens in November and I had to wait till the spring before I really got to use the lens. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the gear that I talked about in this video, please consider using my affiliate links down below in the description or these ones right here. I get a small commission back anywhere from 2 to 12% back, and that goes back to supporting this channel, helping purchase gear such as the 200 to 800 millimeter, this guy right here, the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, the Canon EOS R1, and who knows, maybe even the 35 millimeter F1.2. But if you are looking at purchasing this lens, just to let you know, uh, there's way more demand for this lens than anybody expected. And if you take a look at all the positive reviews out there for this lens, it's not surprising that more people continue to pre-order and purchase this lens. So um, you might want to be a little bit patient. I know Canon's working hard to get these out the door because obviously they get money, they have earnings, but only if they, they're able to sell it to you. A pre-order doesn't make them any money. And of course, as we start to move into January, we're start to gonna hear we're gonna start to hear about the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. It's gonna be announced. The R1's gonna be announced. We're gonna get more lenses. So Canon really needs to get their um, fabrication, their their supply chain in order to deliver all these lenses. And I wouldn't be surprised if they start to catch up sometime around March. If you've already pre-ordered and you're on the list, then you might start to get your shipment in January. Some people already got their lenses this week. 
I got mine on the day of release and I love it. And even though there's a premium for these things on the internet right now, I'm not gonna sell it. I, I just love it too much. And I think come the spring, I'm just gonna fall in love. I'm never gonna sell it. Like I did with the Canon 800 millimeter for this lens here, the 100 to 500 millimeter. And I, do, I did regret selling it because while this is an amazing lens and it's 1.5 pounds lighter, the stabilization is absolutely incredible with this lens. I just love it, but it doesn't go past 500 millimeters. And so I was missing, the, the difference between 500 millimeters and 800 millimeters is staggering. These moon shots that I got in this video, you wouldn't be able to get with this. I tried and the moon is a whole lot smaller. 800 millimeters? 200 to 800 millimeters gives me so many more options and I'm just staggered by it. And who knows, um, the 100 to 500 might stay on the shelf a whole lot more than this thing over here, but it's an f6.3, that's an f4.5. So if I'm gonna be shooting indoors, I'm gonna to gravitate toward the 100 to 500 millimeters, as is um, if I'm gonna be shooting in sort of twilight hours, but so far the 200 to 800 millimeter is terrific. It is big, let me just pick it up for you again. Oh, it's a little bit heavy from here, six and a half pounds. So this is what it's like before it's extended, extend it all the way out. It's a pretty big lens. Um, and if you have big hands, it really helps because give you an idea here, this is me putting my hand around it as much as I can. I've got pretty big hands, um, but you get used to it. Anything that gives you really good results, you just get used to it. Um, but yes, uh, I, I wanna say a special thanks for anybody who did use my affiliate links because while I've only got 50,000 subscribers, um, the income I get from affiliate links more than overshadows what I get from YouTube. And that's what's allowing me to purchase gear like this, uh, two times extenders, and all the stuff that I plan for the channel in 2024. So thank you very much. Have yourself a happy Christmas, happy Boxing Day, and a happy New Year's. And um, I get a sense that more information is coming out. I wonder if we'll have any leaks on Friday, because Friday is not only the last day of the week, but it's the last business day before Christmas. And I don't expect we get many leaks over the Christmas break, over at least the 25th, 26th, and 27th. But um, I'm gonna pay attention, see what happens. We might get some other leaks come out from the Camera Insider, Canon rumors, Sony Alpha rumors, Four Thirds rumors, because 2024, starting in Q1, mid-January, we're, we're gonna start to get some camera announcements, some leaks. It's gonna be a very big year. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourself a great weekend. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. We'll see you again soon.